I'd love to tell you what these smell like, but my hair fever is killing and I have absolutely no idea what these smell like. Yo, what's good everyone? Thank you for tuning in to today's video. If you're new around here, my name is Aiden, and as you can see from the title, after two weeks away, we are back again with another Air Max 1 for us to take a look at. Now this heat wave has completely killed me off, I will be honest, that's the reason we've had no content. It's just been too hot to film, I record in a very small space, and this heat is absolutely baking me, even right now, even though it's raining outside, it is still absolutely sweltering in here, so I definitely don't want to be taking up too much time on this intro. As you can see from the title, in today's review, we will be taking a look at the highly controversial, newly released Nike Air Max 1 86 Lost Sketch. Now, I've heard a lot of things about these, a lot of device different opinions about it, and I personally can't wait to get into it. So with all things said, just sit back, relax, and let's go ahead and get straight into this video. So first things first, before we go any further with this video, as always, let's just kick this off with the packaging. And the packaging itself, we've already actually seen once this year, so I will try and go over it quite quickly. Now the box itself is very much in that lost and found theme, so we have that mostly all black look with that very nice aged distress look to it with all this red detailing. We then have that very nice semi-translucent swoosh across the middle of the box, actually viewing into the box itself. One of my favourite touches about this box itself. We then have some more very nice detailing on either side of the box. So we have the air unit detail in there. Again, super nice detail if you're asking me. And if we then take a quick look at the label, which reads, we do have the Nike Air Max 1 86 PRM. And it is in the LT Smoke Grey Diffuse Blue colorway. And as always, as it is a UK size 9, it is a personal perf myself. Now, if you do want to take a closer look at the size label, just pause the video right here. This is exactly how it should look. So there you go. And then if we do open up the box itself, on the inside, we do have that very nice tissue paper. I'm sure you guys wanted to see that. But with all that said, we have what we came for. So let's go ahead and get straight into the shoes. So without any further ado, the moment we've all been waiting for, in hand, we have the Nike Air Max 1 86 Lost Sketch. Now, according to what I've read online, this shoe is actually inspired by those initial sketches by Tinker Hatfield, and they have taken inspiration from those initial mock-ups and actually decided to create a brand new colorway for us to enjoy. Right. So this is definitely one of those polarizing things where I feel like it's open to debate, it's open to interpretation, and it's open to you to have your own individual opinion on it. And that's why I personally am very excited about doing this video. Anytime we have a shoe that's universally loved, it's, it's pretty much a little bit of a Marmite shoe because everybody loves it. I personally love it when there's a device opinion so we can actually have a conversation about why it's a good sneaker, why it's not necessarily a good sneaker, and we can kind of form our own individual opinion on whether or not we like it. You're goddamn right. So if you are tuning into this video today to actually decide if this is something you want to add to your personal collection as well, in my review, as always, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know from materials through to sizing. So by the end of this video, you can decide for yourself whether this is something you're going to add to your own personal collection as well. So just diving straight into this one, starting out with the upper to begin with. For this one, we do actually see a very nice pairing of this diffused blue with indigo haze, which in my personal humble opinion, gives this shoe an almost Palmer vibe aesthetic maybe that's just me but if you guys do agree with me do make sure to let me know in the comment section down below with that said if we kick this off from the front of the shoe and we'll gradually work our way back so at the base of the shoe we do just have your pretty standard all mesh material making up the toe box itself but instead of that traditional white color this time it is in more of a smokier gray which in my personal opinion was a very nice touch and that's then accented very nicely with this much darker blue tone actually seen around the toe box on the mudguard along with that safari print design now i have heard of some people actually calling these the worst safaris of all time I personally feel like that's a little bit of a stretch. I couldn't even tell you what the worst Safari actually is. But all I can say is I feel like the Safari print design with that smoke gray on the toe box, the, the color purring, the material purring, absolutely fine by me. Absolutely no complaints. Unfortunately enough, I've seen some absolute stinkers as far as QC is concerned. I've seen a lot of people having issues with glue marks and scuffs and scratches straight out of the box. Fortunately enough for me, the material so far, absolutely perfect. So again, no major complaints. Now, as we do continue to work our way further back, we do have a very interesting switch up as far as the materials are concerned. So on both the U-throw, as well as in the quarter midfoot panel, we do actually have a material that has completely stumped me, I will be completely honest. Now, when I first got these, when I first ordered them online, I don't know if I was expecting suede, new book, durabook, whatever you want to call it, 
I honestly wasn't expecting this. It kind of has like a feel of canvas, but also maybe ripstock. But again, doesn't necessarily feel like either of those things either. I have spoken to a few people online and they haven't been able to tell me what it is either. I've checked a lot of the major news applications. I've checked sneakers and nothing is really telling me exactly what this material actually is. It's a very delicate feeling material, over, not necessarily overly too soft. And overall, it's an absolutely fine material. One thing I will say is it definitely has a more delicate aspect to it than the other materials that they've actually used on the shoe. So it kind of makes me feel like if you catch it or if it gets scuffed or dirty, it may not have the, the durability that other Air Max ones have and it may not be the easiest to keep clean. So as far as like wearability and sustainability over a long uh, period of time, I will be honest, I'm not entirely certain how it's actually going to hold up. Straight out of the box, mine was absolutely fine. But again, some of the people I spoke with, they showed me some pictures and it just, there's a lot of issues with it already. So again, I guess it kind of just comes down to which pairs you get. But if you can actually check your pairs before actually maybe leaving the store, that's probably going to be the best way to go around it. Because again, just a very interesting material choice overall. Now, in the middle of the mid foot itself, we then have this very nice dark hit of blue making up this Nike swoosh. And that is the same on both the lateral and medial sides. Now, it has this almost felt like quality, but it also could potentially even be suede. So just kind of take that with a pinch of salt. Again, overall, the material quality is absolutely fine. And then as we do work our way up to the ankle collar, we'll start this off with the ice days to begin with. Now, the ice days themselves have been constructed from a TPU material. And again, just like what we saw with the U-throw and the quarter midfoot panel, we have that exact same material around the ice day as well. Now, as far as the ankle collar is concerned, again, just like what we saw with the toe box, we do have more of that mesh detailing making up the collar. And as you reach the heel, again, it is a little bit more of the same. So around the bottom on the mud guard, we do have that safari print design. In the middle, again, we do have that very interesting material is just what I'm gonna call it. And then in the middle of the heel itself, we do have that Nike Air branding embroidered into the heel, looking absolutely beautiful as always. Now, when it does come to the lace options for this one, unfortunately, we do only actually get one set of laces. And in my humble opinion, that is definitely a very big negative about this shoe. Now, the laces that you get are in that very similar smoky gray color to what we saw with the toe box. And they are just of your regular flat shoe lace. I personally feel like a sail lace to match the midsole, which we'll get onto later, or even a white lace or even a blue lace, would give the shoe a little bit more character and a little bit more of a better feel. I just feel like these smoky gray laces Whilst they're absolutely fine, there's no wow factor to it. And in a lot of cases, laces can actually make or break a shoe. Now, I definitely won't say that it's broke the shoe or it's, it's any issue for the shoe whatsoever. So if you like these laces, leave it as it is. But I just feel like as it is, it's just a little bit too bland. So I'm definitely going to make it a little bit of a change for myself. So if you have any suggestions which way I should go, whether I should go with a sail lace, a white lace, maybe like a slightly diluted yellow lace i'm really not sure which way i'm leaning at the minute so if you guys have any suggestions do make sure to let me know in the comment section down below and then beneath the lace themselves again we do have more of that smoke gray color making up this nylon tongue at the top of the tongue we then have your pretty standard tongue tag so it's done again of that mostly smoky gray color and it does also feature that nike air max branding once again now this was something that we actually covered in a previous review which was the big bubbles where i did actually mention that the tongue is a little bit shorter and a little bit more well-rounded I personally love that. I don't know if everybody does, especially the OG Air Max One heads. But for me, as somebody that's relatively new to collecting Air Max Ones, I would definitely say I really like this shorter tongue. It just looks very good on feet. It just makes it a little bit easier to kind of match up to the pants. So the, the pants sit a little bit nicer on the shoe as well. So again, that's definitely one of the nicer touches for the shoe as well. And then speaking of really nice touches, we do actually have that very nice original sizing actually featured on the actual sock liner. I will be honest, it was, it was a little bit difficult to actually capture it on camera and my camera kept going out of focus. I will show you what the best footage was that I was able to get. But as you can see on mine, we have that US size 10 because this is a UK size nine. So again, a very nice nostalgic feel for the sock liner. And as we then continue to work our way even further onto the inside of the shoe, it again, it is just more of the same. So we do have that mostly all dark blue color making up the insole. And then we do also see that Nike Air Max branding featured once again. And then just to close design in terms of the details, as we do work our way down to the midsole, this is probably one of the more controversial areas of the shoe as it has been painted in this very dark sail color or even yellow. 
Now, the midsole itself is, of course, very different to your typical Air Max 1, as it does actually hold the big bubble. Now, the big bubble itself, of course, being ever-present and is pretty much the main feature of the shoe itself. But another thing that's been quite divisive other than the big bubble and other than the colour choice is the fact that they actually have used Air uh, on the side, on the lateral side of the shoe. I do kind of feel like it ties into the storytelling aspect, the fact that they've gone with that pre-aged look to make the shoe look older than it is. And again, it just comes down to preference. So if you like it as it is, that's absolutely fine. If you don't like it, again, absolutely fine. But for me personally, it's, it's just fine. It, there's nothing really, anything else to really say about that. And then just to finish us off in terms of the details, when it comes to the outsole, we do have your pretty standard Air Max 1 style of outsole. Although I will say it is not identical, but I'm not really going to get into the semantics of it. It does maintain that waffle style of design and it has been done of that mostly all dark blue color once again. And then when it does come to the overall sizing for these, like I said at the start of the video, I went through to size with a UK size 9. And it's the same thing I do with every single one of my Air Max 1 pickups. So if you are looking to pick these up for your own personal collection as well, I am just going to recommend going through to size is definitely going to be your best bet. But if you're still on the fence and you want to try them for yourself, again, like I said at the start of the video, these are sitting at absolutely every single major retailer. So head out, try them for yourself. But again, in my humble opinion, true to size should be absolutely fine. And with all that said, we've covered absolutely everything that you need to know. So if we now just go ahead and just wrap up this video. So just to wrap up this video so you guys can get out of here. In terms of my overall opinion on the shoe itself, to give these a rating, I'm going to say they are a very solid 8 out of 10 for me. The main reason I actually wanted to get these for my own personal collection, in a way, was the backstory of the fact that they are basing this off those initial sketches by Tinker Hatfield. But at the same time, it's a very nice colorway as far as the uppers are concerned. It's very nice, easy to rock with a lot of different outfits. Although, again, the yellow on the midsole is a little bit of a stretch too far, but I think overall, that's absolutely fine. I also really do love how the 86s feel on feet because whenever I've worn my big bubbles, I've always felt they're incredibly comfortable. I just think the overall silhouette and the style has grown on me so much since I've had the big bubbles that I kind of feel like I do want to add a few more colorways into the collection just to keep it fresh. I think from my original Big Bubbles review, I did actually say, I'm not going to buy any more Air Max 186s. I only really need the OG colorways. And here we are a couple of months later, and I have a GR colorway. That's not to say that I'll be collecting every single one, although it's very possible that I might do, because again, Air Max 1s are the thing for me this year. So overall, even though I said I wasn't going to be collecting them, I am very glad to get these. £145 is a very reasonable price. And I feel like if you do shop around and you do actually get a discount code, I think a lot of people are going to get these from the retail, so definitely is worth buying, but it may be worth waiting because I can definitely feel like these are destined for sales at some point. So if you want to get them, I don't think you'll have any issues with them as long as you get a good QC because, again, mine was absolutely fine, but there have been some stinkers out there. So QC aside, the details are fine. The materials are decent. The backstory is very nice, and in my humble opinion, the colorway is also very nice as well. That's pretty much all I really have to say about it. So with that said, I'd love to get your guys' opinion. So let me know what you think of my rating. Let me know what yours is as well. And let me know any of your other thoughts about this shoe in the comment section down below. Now, like I say in every one of my videos, for everyone that stuck around to the end, I do just want to say a massive thank you. If you haven't already, please feel free to smash that subscribe button. Also, do make sure the bell notification is switched on so you never miss a video. And I hope to see you all again in the next one. Peace. Thank you.